Hey guys, welcome back to another one of my videos. If you're new here, my name is Holly and thank you so, so much for watching. Before I get into this one, you guys know the drill. I'm wearing my friend's earrings. These earrings are from my friend's little business, the Aurora Collective. They're little mushrooms today. I thought they were so cute, so I couldn't pass up wearing them. But without further ado, let's get into this video. So today's case is the case of Jodie Myers, and this one unfortunately discusses themes of domestic violence. So if that's something that you're not comfortable with, I have a few other crime videos that don't discuss those sort of things. And I don't think next week's video will be a DV one either if you want to watch that one but Yeah, hopefully I will see you in another video But Jodie Myers was born on the 17th of May in 1995 to her mother Lucy I couldn't find anything about Jodie's dad I don't think he was really around that much when she was growing up Jodie had quite a few siblings growing up She had three sisters and a brother and they all got along most of the time They would have the occasional fight But I mean are you really siblings if you don't fight with your siblings sometimes? One of her younger sisters was called Tanya and growing up they were really really close Wherever Jodie went Tanya went they were like two peas in a pod You never really got one without the other Jodie was always joking and laughing and she was just someone who loved life She would almost always look at the bright side of things and people just loved that about her in primary school She was known to be a bit cheeky She had lots of friends and it made sense because she just got along with people when Jodie was a little bit older older she met a man by the name of Neil Archer and let's talk a little bit about Neil he was one of four boys to Margaret Archer and I think all of his brothers they all had different dads and again like Jodie Neil's dad wasn't really around growing up Neil was described as crafty and I don't mean like into knitting and painting and sewing and stuff I mean like clever at achieving one's aims by indirect or deceitful methods so yeah, he was a bit of a crafty boy and he didn't finish school. He wasn't the most academically gifted, but he was street smart. And his mum, Margaret, was really strict. All four of the boys knew not to challenge her. And although it seems like Neil was the favourite, he still had a lot of rules that he was expected to follow at all times. And I'm sure growing up, this would have had an impact on the type of person that he became. Now, I don't actually know what age Neil and Jodie were when they met, but Neil was a lot older than and Jodie and by the time that Jodie was 18 and Neil was 27 they were actually engaged and not long after that the two of them moved into a house together in a little country town called Manham in South Australia. Manham is a small rural town located about an hour east or a hundred kilometers out from Adelaide which is the capital of South Australia. Housing in Manham is cheap I guess because it's such a small town but honestly it's crazy. I was looking at the houses and you can get a reasonably new house for three to four hundred thousand dollars. Can you believe that? Where I live, which is about 25 minutes out of central Sydney, the average price of a four bedroom house is three point one million dollars. That's the average, which is just so crazy. I don't know how I'm ever going to afford a house. But anyways, back to Manham. It sits right next to the Murray River, which is a very famous, long, important river in Australia. But this means one of the main tourist attractions there are the river boats or basically anything on the river, really. Water skiing and canoeing also. There's walks to do around Manham to waterfalls and whatnot. But this is a small town. Everyone knows everyone in Manham. And although it is a small town, it is also a very proud one, which is pretty common for small country towns. When Jodie was still 18, she gave birth to a little boy that the couple called Elijah. Jodie was absolutely in love with this little baby. She was so happy. Elijah was her whole world and she did everything for this baby. She was such a great mum. It was like she was born for the role and Neil was really happy also. His mum Margaret and her partner Lawrence lived really really close which definitely made things easier for Neil as he had that support from his mum when he needed any help with little baby Elijah. The reason why I say Neil had that support from his mum is because for whatever reason Margaret did not like Jodie at all. She made no effort with her whatsoever and when Jodie and Neil would fight Margaret a lot of the time would get involved and side with her son and there was a few times when Neil and Jodie would fight at Margaret's house then Margaret would actually tell Jodie to leave and that 
that in itself isn't such a bad thing but what Margaret would do is she would lock Jodie out of the house and keep little baby Elijah in the house making it so that Jodie could not get to her son and Neil was inside the house too and so I guess it would have made it so tricky because there's nothing really Jodie could do and understandably it really upset Jodie when this happened and there was no real reason for Margaret to dislike Jodie so much she was a great mum and a good person like I said before Margaret was the mother of four boys and Neil seemed to be the favorite and I do wonder if Margaret was almost like a little bit jealous of Jodie not in like a weird sense of like wanting to be with her son but I just I feel like sometimes mothers can get a bit that way when their sons get girlfriends or wives I think sometimes mums just struggle with letting their sons go but it's like a little bit extreme the couple was starting to fight a lot though and by early 2015 Jodie actually mentioned to her family that she was thinking of ending things with Neil. And Neil wasn't completely silly. He was catching on that Jodie was losing interest in the relationship. He didn't see himself as a problem though, rather blaming Jodie's mum and sisters as the reason they were breaking up or going through a rocky patch, I should say, cause they weren't breaking up technically at that point, but it was on the cards. And he actually spoke about this to Tanya's husband about how he felt like it was Jodie's mum and sister breaking them up. And basically Tanya's husband told him that he had two options he could leave or he could stay and try and make things better and according to Tanya's husband this is when Neil looked him dead in the eyes and said I'll kill her obviously he thought this was concerning but sadly there wasn't that much that he could really do because although Jodie knew the relationship wasn't going great she still cared about Neil and so it wasn't easy to leave and on top of this she was probably worried about what he would do if she did leave she was kind of stuck and I think because of this she just tried to stay and make the relationship work. On Wednesday August 26th of 2015 Jodie and a few family members made their way to Jodie's stepfather Brenton Ward's house to surprise him as a birthday type celebration for him. He had a big campfire on his property and so all the family were coming over to have a barbecue and just spend time sitting around the fire celebrating Brenton's birthday which honestly sounds kind of stressful for him or at least it would be for me like if someone organized a surprise party at my own house I'd be like damn guys like please give me some warning so I can clean my house Neil was also invited to this party and he did drive Jodie there but Neil had never made much effort at all to get to know Jodie's family he'd never gone out of his way to hang out with them and this night was no different when Jodie got out of the car he told her that he wasn't getting out with her and he stuck to his word he sat in the car for the whole party he didn't get out once not even when Jodie and then again her family went over to the car to try and get him out and also offer him food which he also declined like I'm sorry but what a vibe kill he sat in that car for the whole time until around 8 or 8 30 where Jodie decided that she'd finally had enough of the party and she got back in the car and they drove home. Neil said that his actions that night caused him and Jodie to have an argument which I'm not surprised by at all and I'm sure neither are you guys. Jodie apparently was upset with his behavior saying that she wasn't impressed by his actions. Neil said that she said that she didn't even think he was actually in the car and and I didn't really know what she meant by that part, but that's what she said apparently. I guess maybe she meant like she felt he was trying to be deceitful. Neil said that in the argument, Jodie was so angry that she actually called and organized for someone to pick her up. He said he saw her get in a red Nissan X trail with a couple he didn't know. And sadly, that was the last time Neil ever saw his fiance. Jodie Myers. Two days later on Friday the 28th of August 2015 Lucy gets a text from her daughter Jodie and this is where things start to get a little bit shady. The message said can't have Kylie tonight I've left Neil yesterday changing my number let you know where I am later a friend picked me up I'm not in this area 
Send all details later when sorted stuff out, but I'm safe with friends. Love you. I couldn't actually work out who Kylie was, but my guess is maybe a niece that she was meant to babysit. But either way, the text was really strange because Lucy knew that her daughter Jodie would never go anywhere without her son Elijah. She loved that baby boy so much and everyone knew it. And as well as this, the text wasn't written in the usual texting style that Jodie used. There were grammatical errors in the text text which wasn't like Jodie and she had spelt friends wrong. Jodie knew how to spell and her mum Lucy said that if she ever made a typo she would send another text with the correct word underneath which didn't happen with this text. And Lucy replied to this message also but she never received a reply back. She just felt like something wasn't quite right and two days later she showed the text to another one of her daughters who agreed with Lucy that the text definitely didn't seem like one that actually came from Jodie and because of this the two ladies then took this to the police to report Jodie missing. Police got onto the job pretty quickly in this case interviewing the people that last saw Jodie which happened to be Neil and his mum Margaret and at the time they weren't suspects they just happened to be the last people that saw Jodie and her own family was interviewed also and I believe those interviews helped shed a little bit of light on potentially what may have happened but around the same time Neil and Margaret did multiple interviews where they can be seen begging for Jodie to come back. In one interview, Neil says how Jodie made him the man that he is today and how much of a beautiful partner she was. Was being the key word there. If you know, you know. Margaret also did one interview where she appeared really upset having to stop at times for breathers because she was so upset when she talked about how much she wanted Jodie to come home as her son Elijah needed her. And people really felt bad for Neil and his mum because they just seemed so devastated that Jodie was missing. Police, as well as interviewing family members, were also searching bushland and part of the Murray River for clues. They distributed flyers to rural properties between Ettrick and Manham, urging landowners in South Australia's Murraylands to review any farm gate CCTV they might have, hoping to get that red Nissan X-Trail on someone's CCTV. Police still didn't know who this mystery couple was that had picked up Jodie and at this point they had no leads either. Despite this, everyone was searching high and low for Jodie. Her family, Neil's family, as well as a whole bunch of other people just from the Manham community. Like I said before, the town was very small and so the news of Jodie missing spread really, really fast. People were really concerned because it wasn't common for people to go missing in Manham and it just seemed like Jodie had disappeared into thin air. 13 days after Jodie went missing, there was still no sign of her and Neil was asked to go back to Manham Police Station to do another interview or provide a second statement about his missing fiance. Police wanted to see if Neil was forgetting to mention anything that might be important to this investigation. Perhaps he was forgetting to mention the fact that he used his missing fiance's credit card two days after she went missing to withdraw some cash. Police had looked into Jodie's bank records and found that on the 28th of August there had been a withdrawal of $250 which was all the money in Jodie's account from a local ATM. And with this information initially there came a glimmer of hope that Jodie was still alive and around in the area but this hope didn't last long as when police checked the CCTV footage at the ATM at that time none other than Margaret and Neil were there seen getting the money out not looking good guys to make matters worse police knew that Jodie's phone credit had been recharged after this withdrawal which is when Lucy received that text from Jodie about her going away with friends the credit for the phone was also bought locally at a news agent that had CCTV and can we guess who was seen on the CCTV buying the phone credit? If you guess Margaret then 10 points to you. Police again on CCTV then saw Margaret walk back to a green car where Neil was and they sat for about six minutes and this six minute period is when Lucy received that text from Jodie and then after this the two of them drove off down the street. Before police found out all this info Jodie's family were already suspicious of Neil. He'd never made effort to get to know them and from what the family could tell Neil wasn't the greatest support 
support to Jodie anyway. Their relationship was rocky. They'd broken up many times before and gotten back together and it just didn't seem like they'd ever really been a good match. Jodie's mum Lucy felt like while Jodie was in that relationship she'd been putting on a happy front but Jodie was her daughter and Lucy could see through it. Lucy knew that Neil caused problems and this was confirmed one day when Jodie said she could finally see how Neil was trying to take her from her family and this had brought relief to Lucy at the time because she thought that her daughter's relationship was finally over but relationships with abusers are rarely ever that simple. A lot of the time if they feel like someone is pulling away they will do everything in their power to try and get that person back. They need to be the one that calls the shots. And that's exactly what Neil was like. Jodie wasn't allowed to have Facebook unless he had her password. She wasn't allowed to text anyone he didn't let her. She wasn't allowed to talk to anyone, meet up with anyone that he didn't allow her to first. He always had the upper hand and if he didn't, he snapped. At this point, although police were fairly certain that Neil had committed the crime, they knew it would be a hard case to prove without finding Jodie's body. And they didn't know for sure that Jodie wasn't alive, but given the circumstances, they knew that it would be a very small chance that she would still be alive at this point. And a breakthrough came a few weeks after Jodie went missing when Margaret's partner Lawrence was interviewed. The weekend Jodie went missing, Lawrence was actually away in Tasmania and he mentioned to police that when he came back, Neil, with the help of Margaret, had redone his shed floor as a Father's Day present. Neil had really gone above and beyond and he literally re-cemented that shed floor which I can't imagine would be an easy task and Lawrence mentioned it to police because he actually thought it was really strange. Neil wasn't a very giving person. He wasn't the type of person that would give you the shirt off his back and Lawrence hadn't asked for his shed to be redone. Lawrence himself actually described Neil as lazy and to top this all off Lawrence said the concreting job that they'd done was like really really bad. So they hadn't even done a good job. And of course this rang alarm bells for the police. I mean, who happens to redo a concrete floor the weekend someone goes missing. Police worked out that Neil and Margaret had got the concrete from Bunnings and again CCTV really fails these guys as they are seen there at Bunnings buying the concrete. Police felt like they needed to dig up this floor and see what was underneath which they did on the Friday 25th of September 2015 and sadly when they did the body of Jody Myers was found. Neil at this point knew his facade was up and he actually confessed the murder to to one of his brothers, Aaron. Aaron said that after Neil confessed, Neil tried to leave, but Aaron had more questions for him. Firstly, he asked Neil why, and Neil said that he knew Jody was gonna leave him and take Elijah, and so that's why he did it. That was the reasoning for ending the mother of his child's life. Aaron also asked how and Neil said that he strangled her with like a jumper cord. He'd wrapped it around her neck and strangled her. And by this point police had enough evidence to arrest and charge Neil with the murder of Jodie Myers. When in court Neil pleaded guilty which means that there was no trial and he was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 22 years which means that by 2037 he will be eligible for parole. And how about Margaret you guys ask? Well there was no way to prove that she actually took part in the murder so police couldn't charge her with that but she did plead guilty to helping Neil avoid apprehension and was sentenced to six and a half years with a non-parole period of four years which means that by now she's probably out of jail and living her life again which I feel like is so wrong that she gets to live her life when Jodie doesn't but you can only charge people with what you have evidence for. I mean, that's how the system works and it makes sense that she's out. Exactly a year after Jodie passed away, there was a memorial held for her at, I think it's called Manham's Gas Reserve. 
There was a tree planted there in her memory and everyone who attended stood around this tree with flowers and candles to remember Jodie. Everyone sang also and I just wanted to include this part because it's nice to know that her memory lives on. Elijah, Jodie's son, is now living with his grandma Lucy and he misses his mum every day. One year he got a bike for Christmas and Lucy said that when he got it he went and got a photo of his mum and he put the photo in the shed where he was riding his bike around so that she could watch him ride his bike. Which is just so sad. I always feel so bad for the kids involved, like having to grow up with no parent. I can't imagine how hard that would be. But that is all the information I have on this case. As always, I will link DV related information down below if you or anyone you know potentially is in a unsafe situation. There is information down there for you to read through if you wish to. I will also have my Instagram down there if any of you guys want to follow me on there. You are more than welcome to. I post, not that regularly, but I post on stories quite often so you can watch what I get up to day to day. And I hope you guys are having a wonderful day wherever you are and hopefully I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.